Well, as the country gets ready for budget cuts, lawmakers are speaking out about what can be done to fix the problem. Congressman Emanuel Cleaver is here to talk to us about the debate. Welcome, Congressman. Good to be with you. Yeah, so let's go ahead and start here. We've been talking about the sequester now for months. I mean, uh, I think it was August 2011. Of, yeah. So we've been talking about this for a long time. No deal has been reached. The deadline has passed. In fact, there are reports that you guys adjourned, what, at 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon, and the Senate adjourned at 6 o'clock? It almost seems indifference on the part of lawmakers. Why did congressional leaders adjourn so quickly, and you guys did not pass anything? Well, first of all, uh, uh, there's only one human being on planet Earth, and most people don't realize this, who can, who can uh, call a vote, and his name is John Boehner, uh, the Speaker of the House, not the, the whip, nobody but John Boehner. And so uh, we uh, are really at the mercy of what Mr. Boehner does, and frankly, uh, I, I think he would like to have a, a, a vote. He's a good guy who wants the trains to run, uh, but he has a very unruly uh, caucus that uh, will not go along with any kind of a compromise. Now, uh, you mentioned August 5th, uh, 2011. I'm one of the few people who voted against having this sequestration in the first place. I called it a Satan sandwich at the time, uh, and everybody now is saying you were right. I hate to do the I told you so. But when you, do, when you have an uncivil group of people, 535 people in Washington, and you put one of the most difficult problems they face out in the distance, and, and nothing happens in between that would create a, a higher level of trust and a higher level of civility, it wasn't going to work. It, it just can't work, and it didn't. Congressman Cleaver, let's talk a little bit about the local impact of these spending cuts. Many schools, both on the Missouri and Kansas side, are struggling right now. How will this impact education? Well, the, the, the greatest fear is that uh, Head Start would be impacted. Uh, Head Start is a program that's funded pretty much uh, by the federal government only. And uh, when you start having to furlough uh, Head Start teachers, that means that kids can't go to school, and when the kids can't go to school, particularly the Head Start kids, because many of them come from uh, low-income homes, then the parents can't go to work. Uh, and so you're going to have a rippling effect all through the uh, economy. Uh, I think you're going to have problems, we're going to have problems with transportation, uh, with the uh, Area Transportation Authority, because uh, it is a federally funded uh, 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 organization as well. And the one thing that I hope everybody listening to this and looking at this show understands is that this is a, a regional federal center, Kansas City is. We have uh, one of the largest numbers, uh, a number of, of federal employees outside Washington, Virginia, and Maryland in the country. And so when you talk about fur uh, furloughing those uh, employees, it means they're not going to be able to, to spend money locally. It's, it, can, it can be very, very impactful. And I do agree that there's probably been some exa exaggeration by some in Washington. But let's not misunderstand uh, uh, the, the impact that it will have. And, and some of these are going to be real and, de and very damaging. Let's talk about some of these exaggerations, too, because uh, the public a little weary and understandably think about this back in 2011 we all heard the headlines we reported it numerous times an hour within a government shutdown you remember that then in July of 2011 we were talking about the fight of the debt ceiling making sure that doesn't increase and we talked about in December of 2012 this so-called fiscal cliff that we were gonna uh, go over but in the end there was always a deal that was made may it be a last-minute one it was made so you can understand maybe the public is a little weary about that. In fact, some may even say that uh, they don't even really seem to panic. Well, I, I think they're making a mistake, uh, and uh, that mistake uh, is only overshadowed by the mistake that Congress has made. Uh, look, we've had a government shutdown back in 1996 when Bill Clinton was in the White House. It was ugly. It did damage. The Congressional Budget Office, the CBO, the nonpartisan budget group, says that if we continue in this sequestra sequestration, we could end up with a 0.6 drop in GDP. That, that doesn't sound like a lot. Uh, that's, that's very, very damaging because we're still hemorrhaging from uh, the uh, recession. And, and Ben Bernanke, uh, in front of our committee uh, two days ago, warned. He said, look, you stop spe uh, federal, federal spending at a very high level, and it could trigger uh, the much dreaded uh, you know, second phase of the recession. 
Congressman Cleaver, thank you for joining us this midday. We appreciate your time. Good to be with you. Yeah, thank you, Congressman. And just a quick note, too. Uh, Republicans also offering a statement. we got to talk about that. They're saying they've offered numerous uh, solutions to the president, but he has not accepted that, as well as them saying that there is going to be no last-minute backroom deals, absolutely no agreement to increase taxes. And that's the uh, statement from the Republican Party.